But now we go to the segment. We go to the CM Punk footage. This was a mess. <laughs> yeah. So Nicholas and Matthew Jackson. Are no, in- like before that, like like when they were saying like let's go to the Young Bucks, you can tell like everyone on commentary looked so embarrassed. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Shivani looked pissed. Oh, even more when they after they showed it. We go to the back. Matthew and Nicholas Jackson are there. They said the TV audience is ready to see the footage, but not before context. Nicholas said Dynasty is coming up, and it's FTR versus the Young Bucks, which got them to think about the wounds from All In in London. So, this is the perfect time to talk about all that and what went down. The biggest show in the company's history. As a lot of critics said, whoever won that match would be the greatest tag team of the generation. Matthew said before their match, an incident occurred backstage between a scapegoat, the lovable kid, Jack Perry, who reminded them a lot of them at his age, and the other individual who tried to make it all about himself, someone who was friends with FTR. Nicholas wondered if FTR were the masterminds of the entire situation, which Matthew said they couldn't say, as that's unprofessional. There was a cut, and Matthew said the incident put the locker room in dismay as they didn't have time to prepare for their match. Not even time to pray. That if you ask anybody in the room, there should be an asterisk next to FTR's win there because they didn't even get a chance to warm up or even hydrate before that match. They had to do their jobs as EVPs. Matthew said that the footage is short and it's similar to a high school scrap. However, the ramifications were anything but as it threatened to bring down the biggest show of all time. They then roll the tape. Now, there's no audio here. I saw so many people on Twitter going, oh, why didn't they play no audio? Why is there no sound? Because it's got dang security camera. It ain't a camera that AEW set up. And not all security cameras don't have. Like, there are security cameras you could buy with audio. But a lot of times in venues and stuff like this, you're going to get a security camera with no audio. Anyways, they roll the footage. You see Jack Perry backstage and CM Punk walks up. You can see Samoa Joe off to the side, kind of like ready, waiting for his turn to go out for the match with him and CM Punk. And so Punk walks up to Jack, and he's talking to Jack, and Jack's just standing there kind of like pulling his hair back, and he's coming down from his match and everything. And then eventually Punk shoves Perry, and then grabs Perry and puts him in like a guillotine. Joe immediately steps in, and he pulls Jack Perry aside, Hook is standing there kind of just looking on like, what the heck? And then eventually he walks over to like see if Jack's okay and everything. We then see Chris Hero come around from, I guess you could say, where the production table was, where I assume Tony Khan was sitting. So he comes around from over there, and he's looking all kinds of disheveled. Jerry Lynn is there to pull CM Punk away. And that's all the footage is. It just shows CM Punk shoved Jack Perry and put him in a guillotine, and Samoa Joe immediately broke everything up. And what did CM Punk say on the MMA Hour with Ariel Hawani? He said that Jack did the thing of the Crimea River. He then asked Jack if he had a problem. Jack told him to do something about it. And then Punk said, I never punched anybody, but I did try to choke him out a little bit, which Punk shows in the footage. He did not punch or slap or anything like that. He shoved Jack Perry and then put him in a guillotine, a chokehold, like he said. So, yeah, Malachi Black was even there to, like, pull Punk away or whatever. And so they go back to the Bucks. Matthew said that that wasn't the worst of it. The worst was filling a building for such a great wrestling show and losing on that night. Matthew said FTR had the balls to shake their hands, which they won't do at Dynasty. Nicholas storms off while Matthew shows that he's wearing a scapegoat t-shirt. So I assume this might lead to Jack Perry coming back and joining the Elite. But before we get into FTR's promo, what did you think of all this from the Bucks and the footage and whatnot? I will say it was kind of unprofessional that they were showing this in the first place. I was like, why are they even doing this? And I feel like it just made AEW look pretty bad even showing it. That seems like the going consensus on Twitter is that most people were like, yeah, we didn't need to see this. 
Because because going into it, no one knew exactly what we were going to see. And most people thought if they're going to show this, then it's probably going to make Punk look really bad. And it didn't at all. To be completely honest, I saw more people on Twitter going, huh, Punk's kind of a badass than anything. Or, oh, well, this made the company look petty. And speaking of petty, the Young Bucks have a joint Twitter account. And that Twitter account sent out a tweet that said, EV Petty. So, yeah. Honestly, it kind of just made Punk. Like, it honestly just gave Punk more praise because he just said the truth. And it just showed you that he told the truth and didn't yeah. lie about anything. For the most part, yes. Now, I do and don't want WWE to respond. How freaking... Well, how great would oh, this I be? Because And there's only one person I want to use this as fire and fuel, and that's Drew McIntyre. Because I think Drew McIntyre can make something great out of this with his CM Punk feud, where he can, all he needs to do is be like, oh, I saw a video, Punk really is an asshole. Or, oh, I saw a video, uh, Punk really is a prick. What have I been saying? That's all he needs to do. Like, on Twitter, or cut a promo, where he's like, ah, oh, Punk's such a prick, he screwed me last week, and then we saw a video of him being a prick. Somewhere else? 